Morning, everybody. Welcome to the conservatory. It's a sunny morning. So I thought I'd get out of the house. It's a bit dark in there just now. And uh, take advantage of the view. My tulips are cracking. And the ma magnolia? Camellia? Anyway, it's looking rather nice. I, I made a tea last night for us. And it, it was really delicious. And I've got the same amount of ingredients left over. So I thought I would cook them up today. And then I'm going to freeze it. And it sounds like it's a fancy dish. If I said chicken and mushroom in a white wine cream sauce, you might think, ooh, it's a bit. But actually, it's as easy as anything. So I thought I'd just show you. So I've got some heat on the wok, frying pan, or whatever you're cooking with. I've got some butter left over from baking, and it's about 30 grams. I, I don't normally use butter simply because in the waistline, I try to I use oil, but with, with a, a chicken and white wine creamy sauce, it's really nice. And I just had that knob left, so 30 grams of butter, <clears throat> or a bit of oil, and that's melting already. So I've got this chicken, this is chicken thighs. You can use breast, breast dries out a bit, but it's fine in this because it's got a rich creamy sauce to keep it moist. But these are what I have, so I'm just gonna color those off <clears throat> a bit. And I've got a plate ready, because what I want to do is just colour those down a bit, then remove them onto a plate, just while I deal with the mushrooms and the onions for a few minutes. So that's it, I'll just leave that. So how are we doing at home? How's everybody coping in this really horrible, bizarre situation? We're all staying at home and staying safe, apart from the key workers that have got to get out there and do their utmost to bring this pan pandemic pan pandemic pandemic to um to a close and then we can get out and meet our loved ones once again so what are we all doing well i'm sure you've got really tidy houses all the drawers have been sorted out all the windows and curtains have been washed gardens looking nice if you're lucky enough to have a garden if you're lucky enough I've just FaceTimed my oldest daughter. She's got a couple of children, a baby, baby boy, and a three-year-old girl. They live in a flat in Brighton. And obviously no space outside for them. And it's been a bit difficult, to say the least. But I'm very, very pleased just now, FaceTimed, to find them at nine o'clock in the morning, already prepped, making biscuits, the two of them, baby. And little Silka, she'd got all her hair back in a pony. She'd just washed her hands, she'd got an apron on. And she named all the ingredients for me. And that, I thought that was lovely. Do what you can to just pass the time and learn new skills, of course. You know, there's all sorts of things, all sorts of hidden talents that we've got. Yes. And they just need to be discovered. So this, you can hear this now sizzling about. So I'm just getting my plates ready. What I'm going to do next is usual with it. I'll soften some mushrooms and then put the so, soften the onions and the mushrooms, a bit of garlic, and then um, yeah, we'll take it from there. So I'll just sort of wipe off that meat off a little bit. And I'm just transferring it over here. Last night I didn't take the meat out, I just banged everything else in. Uh, but for the sake of sort of doing it properly, really, I'm just taking that away. Nice. Nice. And I've chopped. Oh, nice. Just leave that there a minute. So I've chopped up one white onion, and that's going into the pan now. With the onion. We don't want to fry it in terms of we don't want to get it um, brown. Anything that's sort of burnt on the edges is, is not all that good for you, really. So what we try to do with onions is to soften them down so that they become translucent. It's called sweating, <laughs> sweating the onions down a bit. Um, and what happens is they give off their natural sweetness. And that's what 
adds to the dish such a, such a lot really. So we're just doing that there. And I've got some button mushrooms. Last night I used the portobello mushrooms, which were lovely and delicious, but they are dark. So the sauce was actually almost brown. I think this will be a lighter, more traditional colour. So this is the sort of quantity of mushrooms that I've chopped up. I mostly kept them in half or holes because it's rather nice in this dish. But it is a mushroom sauce. I don't want them to be diced down so much that you can't see them. So we've got a bit more added sort of bulk. And now I'm going to pop those in. The onions are doing great. So they're in. I worked with Simon Rimmer, the chef. I didn't work with him, to be honest. I was on the same. He was top of the bill and I was bottom of the bill last year. But I watched his demo and he, he said about mushrooms. To get that umami, that's a very chefy word, and I don't really know how it's spelled even, but I think it means that mm, deliciousness. With mushrooms, you're supposed to not stir them. You're supposed to let them. I, I, I don't know why the science of it is, but it's very difficult not to stir a pan when you're holding a, a spoon. So perhaps I'll just put that away. What I've got to go in here now, I can do it now. I've got some garlic paste. It doesn't have to be paste. If you've got fresh garlic, a few cloves to taste, or even powdered garlic. But I got this in, so that's what I'm using today. So, probably a good, healthy teaspoonful, a squirt. And a bit for good measure. And I've got some. I used this in a dish the other day, Dijon mustard. And I haven't brought a teaspoon enough, but it doesn't matter because I'm just going to improvise and use the end of this. So that's going in. All this is optional. If you don't fancy mushrooms or you don't like garlic, then don't use it. That's, I'm not a chef, but the remotest stretch. I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not training at all. I'm just like everybody else really. Just through the life, um, adapt recipes or things crop up, you've got something in the fridge, a cupboard that you think you can use. I've, I've given into the stirring, I'm sorry Simon, I've just done it absentmindedly. I've got some thyme, it could be anything, you, you could put rosemary in it, sage, you could change it completely and put maybe some smoked paprika in, but I'm just doing about a teaspoonful of that. Then I'll salt and pepper now. Easy on the salt, you can always add it. And um, reasonably heavy on the pepper. Because I don't think there's any health restrictions on pepper. Not so far. So I'll give that a little stir about. Now then, that's looking fab. Now it's time to put back the chicken. I didn't want to crowd the pan up. That's the reason I took it out. Just stir that all through. Let me see. Yeah. Mm -mm. I'm a very saucy person, me. I said that to somebody the other day. They started snickering. I don't know what the thought I meant. But I love my meals with heavy on the sauce and even a, like a tomato ketchup and all the condiments and mamma them. So that's it. Now, what I've got is a glass of white wine. It's too early, even though it's actually, it's, it's good Friday today. So I'm staining. But I'm going to put a full glass of white wine in at this point. If you don't want to cook with alcohol, just add an extra, I've got some stock shortly, just add a bit more stock. Um, but I like it, and it's a white wine and mushroom sauce at the end of the day. What we need to do with that is cook it long enough to, to quite high, to cook the alcohol out of the wine, but leave the flavour. We don't want the raw wine taste. I don't know how they say that, so this is what I do, cook it out. Um, mm, oh, do you know, this is why I love, I love these dishes. It's just... The anticipation of eating this later today, well no, I'm not, I'm not, I had it last night. What I served this with last night as well, I've got some of those 
baby potatoes. You can get a bag of baby potatoes and I just put them on a roasting tray and put some spray light on and I put a couple of batoned carrots in there. So that was in the oven and then I found I'd got some, they were past the sell by but they seemed fresh, French beans. So this was it. It was little baby potatoes with, which I squirted some lemon on when they'd finished with a few carrots some green beans and this and it was just like being in a restaurant and it's this simple it's this simple so i'm talking to you now and that's starting to do its thing what i'm going to do next i've got all my ingredients in bar either vegetable or chicken stock i won't use all this probably because it's quite liquid in all but what i want to do is leave this cooking to reduce all this liquid down so i am going to put in Probably half of this, so that'll be about 150 millilitres. I can add a bit more later if I want to. Oops, random mushroom, there you go. And all I've got left at the end to do is, this is cream. And I will be adding that just before we serve it. Um, so what I'm going to do, everybody, now, is switch the video off. I'm going to leave the lid off this. But no, that's not true. Initially, I'm going to put the lid on to get the heat up. And when it's bubbling, I'm going to take the lid off to let it reduce. And that means that a lot of that liquid, which is far too runny at the moment, will shrink down and leave us with this thick, luscious sauce that I'm going to be showing you soon. So that's, that's it for now. Um, come back later. and It will probably take in real time probably 20 minutes to half an hour to cook that sauce down and make sure that the chicken is really tender. It'll be very juicy, the chicken, because it's, it's thigh meat, which is, and that's it. So go about your business, do a few things, and I'll be, I'll be back with you very, very soon. Bye for now. Welcome back. Yeah, about half an hour. It's, I didn't add any more stock, so that's just as is, you can see. It's lovely and fragrant. And all I need to do now, I won't keep you long, is add the decadence. It's Easter. You know, it's quite rich, obviously, with the cream in it. But every now and then, cream and butter. That is just fantastic. I'm just tweaking the heat up a little bit with the cream in, just to combine it, emulsify the whole thing together. If you had got any green parsley, perhaps, on here would be nice. Um, maybe you could do coriander, but, you know, I haven't. You could put a handful of frozen peas in at this point, I think, if, um, if you fancied a little bit of colour in there. But if you're serving it with something vibrant colour-wise, like the carrots and peas or the green beans at the side, then you don't need to put anything else in. It's, it's pretty much done. And I'm going to put it into a serving plate for the purposes of the video. What I'll actually be doing with it is either chilling it down, putting it in the fridge until tomorrow evening, or chilling it down and freezing it for some time in the future. But it's so delicious, I fancy it again. We'll probably have it tomorrow, you know. We might change what we'd serve it with. You know, we, I mean, I would have pasta some noodles. But mashed potatoes would be the very thing, I think, in this. Come on, up you come heat. Just want it to bubble up and then, and then we're finished. And that's pretty much my videoing for today done. I'll get on with some other things. I've got some Yorkshire puddings to make. Oh, it's a long story. And I think I might get out in the garden this afternoon. It looks really nice. Like I said earlier, it looks really nice. And this, our viewers, let's get taste of vision and smell of vision. It's absolutely. You know, a splash of brandy. I might do that later. A splash of brandy would be wonderful. So here we go. I'm turning off the heat. 
and I'm going to put it straight into the serving dish and that, that. White wine mushroom and cream chicken in the sauce. Make it, it's fantastic. Thanks for watching. Bye.